Hello, I'm Philip Moon. I'm the Vice President of Products and Intellectual Property in the Channel Enablers Division of Miller Hyman. I've often heard vendor executives say they want their channel partners to change their business and embrace new revenue models and markets. So why do so few partners respond to these change initiatives and even fewer succeed? The move to the cloud is just the latest in a series of demands by high-tech vendors that their channel partners transform their business to new business models. Change like this is inevitable as products and markets mature and technological innovations ripple through the channel. Other transitions come to mind, such as when telecommunications and computing technologies and channels merged, when hardware and software resellers moved to selling add-on services, and when large enterprise-focused partners were asked to move into the mid-market. Today, many vendors are asking their reseller partners to adopt an annuity-based business model built around the cloud. Major transitions like this have a way of succeeding eventually, but vendors and partners are often frustrated by the glacial pace of change and see early margin opportunities erode as the new models become mainstream and margins again start to fall. Let's look at three main reasons why such change initiatives take so long to produce benefits and what can be done to change the game. The first problem is that vendors often ask the wrong partners to change and invest. Vendors most frequently ask their most loyal and more successful existing partners to come on the new ride with them. These partners are easily accessible to channel salespeople and will always listen to their key vendors. But this approach doesn't always make sense. For example, what does a large enterprise-focused partner know about running a volume business in the mid-market? And what makes vendors think that a partner whose business is built around product resale can run an annuity revenue business? Often, I think existing partners are asked to change because vendors think it's going to be easier and quicker than recruiting new partners. However, before any new or existing partners are approached, vendors should relook at their partner selection criteria with the new business model in mind. For example, if you're selecting partners for the mid-market, a track record of mid-market selling seems an obvious criterion. If selecting for success reselling cloud-based products, experience with an annuity business and relevant wraparound services also seems critical to success. So the first thing a vendor should do is to define their partner selection criteria based on the ideal characteristics for success in the new model. But what happens when partner selection criteria are well defined and no partners can be found? When vendors can't find partners that fit their new models, they may be forced to ask existing partners to change and invest. Selling partner change and investment is the job of the vendor's channel sales force who should be constantly seeking opportunities to improve the partnership through continuous change and relevant ongoing investment. However, there's a significant difference between selling incremental change, such as increasing sales capacity or encouraging partners to do more of their own marketing, and selling a whole new business model. One of the key problems is that vendors are not clear what to ask their partners for. The target business model is often not well defined because vendors don't really know what models will be most successful and the steps an existing partner needs to take too quickly and cost effectively transition to the new model have not been sufficiently thought through. It's hard for a channel sales force to sell needed change if they don't know what they're shooting for and they don't know how to get there and worse if they can't justify the required change and investment in economic terms. Vendors need to start with some pilot projects that help them really understand how partners will make money in the new model. Once this is well researched, it's important to train the channel sales force to be able to explain the model and the economic benefits it offers. Just as new products have to be made channel ready with appropriate packaging services and support, Major change initiatives like this have to be appropriately packaged for the vendor's channel sales force. When channel sales reps are equipped with the tools and the skills to sell change and some reference sites to talk about, other partners will also be keen to come on board and take a hard look at the initiative. Let's assume your channel sales force is equipped with the right business case for change and the required enablement tools, programs and processes are in place. The next question is do your channel salespeople have the skills to influence partners? Channel selling is very different than direct sales. 
And despite the fact that the vast majority of high-tech sales revenue now flows through indirect channels, it's still common that vendor channel salespeople have never done a day's channel sales training in their lives. We still see channel salespeople being sent along to sit on direct sales classes where they're wrongly trained to push products at partners and think that their partner placing an order should be the end result of their efforts. At its heart, a channel sale is about selling partner change and investment. Partners make business decisions focused on factors like business opportunity, more revenue, higher growth, or reduced risk. Do your channel salespeople have the skills to influence partnership business outcomes? Are they equipped to sell the cloud business opportunity to partners or to persuade a partner to establish a mid-market practice? Or perhaps more common everyday changes. Do your partners make the investments that are required to take on your new products and services? Do they train their salespeople to proactively sell to new customers? Do your partners make their own marketing investments and generate their own leads or are they totally dependent on your company? Can your channel salespeople put a case to partners to drop competitive products and focus more resources on your business? Do they persuade channel and alliance partners to work cooperatively on major sales opportunities and to openly share sales and marketing information? What changes and investments should your channel managers be selling? Perhaps the needed changes are not as big as a move to the cloud, but they should be identifying specific partner change objectives to improve ongoing channel revenue success. More broadly speaking, channel account management is also about managing partners too. Channel salespeople not only need to know how to sell effectively to partners, they need to know when to sell and when to manage too. So in summary, there are three steps a vendor should take when they ask partners to transform their business to a new model or market. First, make sure you have a clear picture of your ideal partner selection criteria before approaching partners. Select new partners or existing partners based on their fit to what's really needed. Second, have a clear picture of what you're asking partners to do. Research how partners make money under the new business model and assemble the tools and references that your channel salespeople will need to influence partners and enable them to make the transition. And third, train your channel salespeople to sell partner change and investment, not just products and programs.